Panthers. He is third in freshman scoring and second in freshman rebounding. Well, we touched on it in the open, Tom, that, uh, you know, NC State did a really good job of defending the three in that first game. Did only five of 21 in that game, but uh, it's going to be a taller order here at home. Yeah, the Panthers went to the free throw line, Mike, in that game 20 times and made 18 of them. Trying to put the first points on the board, fight for the loose ball over near the NC State bench and collected by the Packet O'Connell. NC State is 17 and 13 on the season, 9 and 10 in conference play. More sell off the backboard for two for the back. And it's good to see for him because his three point shooting has not been there in the second half of the season, and uh, they want him to be more aggressive, get to the rim, get to the line. Third year in the NC State program for Moore Sell after two years at Virginia. See how long it takes Blake Hinson to settle in here. A big night, obviously, senior night for him. Taken back by Horn. On the run. A reset with DJ Burns trying to go back door. And the pass off the fingertips of Taylor and out of bounds to Pittsburgh. And we talked about in Horn and Taylor combined for 10 points against Duke, well below their average. And uh, this is, even though a freshman backcourt, very talented for Pitt. There was a loss on Monday for NC State at home against number nine, Duke, 79-64. Panthers had a win Tuesday on their home floor against Florida State. Second effort, Austin. Goes out of bounds, and that is NC State basketball. Jeff Capel in his sixth season. As the head coach of the Panthers, 95 and 91 overall. O'Connell needs some help in the backcourt there, Mike. <laughs> we had four guys in the front court. <laughs> Everybody Michael, left them. Yeah, Mike O'Connell's like, all right, I need somebody to pass to. He's a transfer from Stanford. This is Burns. Little turnaround, high degree of difficulty, and he comes up short. They're going to try to play him man on man with Federico to start as long as he can stay out of foul trouble. Hinson trying to back it down. Rattles out for Hinson. Here comes Horn. This is such a tough matchup. Uh, it's against smaller cards. He can go inside if you try to take away the three. Missed from Horn. Hinson had 27 points, a game high in the win against Florida State on Tuesday. Made six three pointers in that game in 37 minutes of action. He's got the ball now. Interesting matchup with uh, DJ Horn on Hinson to start with. It's a difficult shot, and the follow-up is a jam. Federico. That's where he's going to do most of his scoring. They love to throw the ball up near the rim and a lob for him, and a great strong finish. Leads the team in field goal percentage, not surprisingly. Often yep. very close to the rim, and 64% from the floor for Federico. Federico from Helsinki, Finland. Born out of the corner, and that is money. You know, we talk about the repost for a center, and that was just a return pass for Horn. He gave it up, defense relaxed, and he got a great look. How about 89 made threes on the season for DJ Horn, shooting 43% from beyond the arc. Federico inside against Burns. Well, again, this is a team about making choices, and I think for uh, at least early on, Kevin Keats would like to see the offense going through Federico rather than Hinson. He averages just under five points per game. He's got four in the first half. Guarding Burns. Spins around the defender for two. Yeah, he just he left. He, he did a nice job of keeping his feet right up until the very end. Uh, that was too good patience for Burns. He usually likes to work on the left block. Good spin to the baseline. With 27 points on Monday for Burns against Duke. Mike, the first time he went over the 20-point plateau this entire season, although he has scored in double figures 22 times. Back it in, and scoring, it's the senior Hinson. And that's, you know, again, it's a smart play for Hinson. You've got a smaller cover on you. Go inside, do your work there. But, I, you know, for NC State, I'm sure they'd rather see him posting up than taking threes. Taylor dropped it off to Burns for an easy two. He, he's, he's got such quick feet. He's really good in the half court. Uh, Pitt wants to run him as much as they can in this game, try to fatigue him. But he is so very good in the low block. 6'9", 275 pounds, D.J. Burns. 
from Rock Hill, South Carolina. This is Hinson leaning in against Morsell. He hits the deck, and a foul is coming up against NC State. DJ Burns with the move on the inside around the defender. Crafty and nifty. But on the other end of the court, Blake Hinson, leading score for the Panthers. He's got two, and it's a three-point game. You changed this last year, Spencer. ACC Basketball on the CW is brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve. The Panthers honoring their seniors tonight certainly includes Blake Hinson, teammates William Jeffress, number 24, the number 12, K.J. Marshall, the senior from Reading, Pennsylvania. Honored for their commitment and dedication to this program and what a senior season it has been for Blake Hinson. Mike, he had 41 points and a home win against Louisville. Made nine three-pointers in that game. What about his performance on the road at Duke in that victory? Seven for seven from beyond the arc. And, uh, you know, this team, Pitt, has two of the more impressive road wins on the year at Duke and then at Virginia at the time, which was a, a terrific win. They were rolling. Um, so Henson will go to the free throw line. Early rest for uh, D.J. Burns. Try to give him... Uh, a little bit of time off in the first half. And the thing I saw, especially in the Duke game, really in the last four to five minutes, a lot of fatigue. Of course, he was having to do a lot of scoring. Also, lead, lead the Wolfpack and assist that game. Vincent able to track down his own miss. Carrington. Hinson. Taylor closing quickly. Hits a little bit of daylight. So Moldiara now into the game for NC State. Then Middlebrook says, well, number 34. Along with O'Connell. Also Jaden Taylor in there. And Horn. Middlebrooks. O'Connell lets it fly. And uh, with Middlebrooks in there, Gara and Federico can play center field a little bit defensively. He can roam. Leg it. Uh, he's been such a, a huge part of uh, this team coming off the bench his last 13, 14 games. Really has settled into that role, Tom. He's a double-digit scorer, my 12 per game. Middlebrooks, Federico fighting inside, and it's Middlebrooks. Nice job. He had a, he had a tough night from the free throw line against Duke, um, but good bounce back there. Just two points and three rebounds against Duke for Ben Middlebrooks. The transfer from Clemson. He's playing in his 91st collegiate game tonight. A lot of experience on the floor amongst these two teams. That includes Blake Hinson playing game number 127 in the college ranks. He'll fire away. May have been altered and deflected by the defense of Diara. Kevin Keats, the head coach of the Wolfpack in his seventh season. 67 and 73 in ACC games. Good record though, Mike, against Pitt. He is 7 and 3. And 3 and 1 here in this building. In fact, NC State is 5 and 1 against the Panthers inside Peterson Events. Well, they, they've been great on the road this year. Up top. Yeah, we talked about it. They like to throw off to the big guys. He has Graham. Low set him up. Guillermo Diaz Graham, who averages about six and a half points per game. This is Middlebrooks charging to the rim and a whistle. And contact. It's going to be Hinson. There's the look. And uh, you let him get to his left hand, and uh, he's trouble. But then you know, everybody's focused in on the drive. You see three eyes, sets eyes, looking at him. And Diaz Graham has an easy basket. He just picked up the foul at the other end to put Middlebrooks at the free throw line. 70% free throw shooter, Ben Middlebrooks, the junior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. <laughs> NC State is a team, 72% from the strike, that is 10th in the ACC. 
And he has given them, he's, he's been a double figure scorer in two of the last five games. So getting a little bit more on, that's, you know, you, you combine him with Horn, that's some pretty good production out of the five spot. So far, the uh, the backcourt for Pitt has been very quiet in this game. And that includes Jalen Lowe, who had a double double against Florida State with 17 points, 10 assists, also had five rebounds for his first career double double for the freshman. Carrington, freshman running mate, falling awkwardly at the stanchion and earning some free throws. He pops right back up. His eyes wide open. He got Middlebrooks on the switch out front. He knew he could take it. You know, I thought. No. Middlebrooks did a nice job forcing him to his left, his offhand, but uh, picks up the foul. And it's, you know, as a guard, take it right to the big guy. 79% free throw shooter. Carlton Carrington. So, Mike, Wake Forest has posted a home win against Clemson, 81-76. Now, as Burns comes back into the game and Middlebrooks leaves, that's what Pitt needed. If they can yep. combine that with a victory tonight, they will have a double bye at the tournament next week in D.C. Which, again, starting 1-5, um, getting blistered by Duke here by 22, and then turning around, going to beating them in Cameron, having the run that they've had. Outstanding effort by this coaching staff. At the time, Duke was number seven, and they beat him 80 to 76. This is Horn, long distance launch, and Carrington goes up the ladder for the rebound. Like a nice defense on Horn that time, and took a tough shot. Yes, Graham trying to follow his miss, can't do it. Breon passes into the game, number 10 in red and black. This is Burns trying to back his way in on Hinson, has to kick it out. Pass just inside the line, hits the jumper. Been getting a little bit more time lately, and uh, it's only, you know, 10 points total his last five games. They had only attempted three shots, Mike, in his last four games. So that's bonus offense. Low at the other end with the jumper for the Panthers. He gets to that left hand, and uh, you know, probably the lesser of two evils making him pull up and shoot a jump shot, but he has really improved over the course of the year. Burns in traffic, turns around over the front rim. That's for DJ Burns. That's a couple times now that he's really gotten himself buried picking up his dribble, but has been able to manufacture points. So Burns is now three of four from the floor and six. Leading score in our game so far as that was deflected. Leggett trying to work on the baseline. It ended up with Horn. And now Burns is trailing the play, Mike. Just joining the fray right now. Appears to be okay. Tried to drop that one low to Morcell on the cut, and Morcell converts. And that's what they do. They give Burns the ball up high. There's a lot of cutting lanes inside, and he is a terrific passer. Now a five-point lead for NC State. Carrington slams on the brakes. Little fall away and a kind roll. Well, you'd think Carrington, he's got a big advantage size-wise over the entire backcourt for NC State. So look for him to do some work in the pain area. First field goal of the night for Carrington. Pass. Morcell, perimeter work with the shot clock down to five. Morcell behind the line. Follows the miss, attacks the rim and scores. Casey Morcell for NC State. Hinson challenged the shot, but he never blocked out Morcell after that. And uh, I'm not a, you know, I've never been a big fan of following your own shot. But Morcell makes it pay off. Struggles continue from beyond the arc for Morcell. Just three of his last 15 attempts. Not at the other end. Diaz Graham. The first three for Pitt in the game. He's made a few this season. 28 on the year. Pitt makes the most per game of any team in the ACC. And Diaz Graham separates ball from Wolfpack player. 
floater. Lowe has it for the Panthers. Ties us at 21. I think uh, Pitt, it's always emotional for the team on senior night, too. I think they've settled into the game with 10 minutes gone by. Burns almost lost the handle. He spins and shoots and travels. We'll take a timeout. The zoo loves it as the Panthers come back and tie this one up. 21 Oval. And we're keeping an eye on North Carolina and Duke for the 262nd time, Mike. Yeah, Ned, and uh, that was about the score at half, too. Uh, Duke has not <laughs> been able to carve back into that lead. And Krzyzewski and his wife, Mickey, there courtside. We saw that earlier. North Carolina wins. They are the outright champions yep. of the ACC. If Duke you know, wins, you need some tiebreakers to figure out seating. You know, it's funny, and it's an unbalanced schedule now with the number of teams, but, but Coach Smith always said the winner of the regular season should be considered the champion. Just because you're tested over, you know, over the course of the season against every team. North Carolina 24 and 6, Duke 24 and 6 as they are both inside the top 10. Carrington shot rattles out. Taylor runs it up. NC State is try trying to stop a three-game losing streak. Two and four in their last six games. This is Burns. Hit the cutter. Taylor has done that a few times tonight, Mike. No, that backdoor cut with uh, Burns lifted has been there in the first half. And again, the Panthers, if they win tonight, they can get one of the top four seeds. They would be number four. Virginia, North Carolina, and Duke have secured double buys at the ACC tournament. How about DJ Burns with three assists in the game already? Leggett carving his way to the rim. Well, you know, NC State's driven him off the three-point line, so well done there, but uh, Pitt doing a nice job countering and getting to the rim. Pitt is one for five on threes. NC State one for four on three-pointers. The Panthers make about ten per game to lead the ACC. Yep. Inside a ten of the shot clock. And a lot of that Blake Henson has been quiet in this game so far. It's a tie-up with the arrow favoring NC State. DJ Burns just threads that pass inside to a cutting Taylor. We are tied at 23. Kevin Keats. Pitt. Pretty good at 50% as well. That's a quick trigger from Taylor. Bounces around. Easy board for Diaz Grant. A lot of activity in the paint as you saw. Carrington extending the range. Over the top. Federico tapped it. But that was a very tough jump shot for Carrington. Baseline activity coming out of the corner. For three in front of the NC State bench for Jalen Lowe. And that's the best look they've gotten, too. Good drive, good penetration into the lane. And uh, Lowe had an easy look. Second three of the game for the Panthers. And Pitt out in front by three after the low three-pointer. First lead tonight. Burns, twisting move. First real double team we've seen, and it was big. Leggett against O'Connell. Offensive foul called. Ishmael Leggett trying to drive the lane. There's the look. Oh, you'll see the screen roll here and uh, the, the inside. No weak side help, and that, that's great offense right there. Great camera work from our crew there. <laughs> Great look, fellas. That's two of and seven ladies. on three-pointers, Mike. So they now have attempted 824 three-pointers this season, far and away the most of the conference. Well, yeah, and 40% of their offense over the course of the year has come from behind the arc. Or sell. Heavy-handed. Austin had the rebound. Low quickly. Even off those misses, NC State has been pretty good getting back in transition defensively. Closing in on the six minute threshold. Low. Of course, direction drops it low. Diaz Graham fumbled it away. 
And now Taylor. Congested area, foul called. Lowe picks up the foul. Well, the Wolfpack got the turnover, and Kevin Keats he didn't necessarily think when he was talking to us before the game that he could turn it over a lot, but that he might be able to speed them up and get them to take some quick shots a little early in their offense. You're watching ACC basketball on the CW, brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Jaden Taylor is at the free throw line. NC State has gone over two and a half minutes without scoring until that free throw. Taylor, the junior from Indianapolis, Indiana, and a transfer from Butler. Panthers have won two in a row. Three of their last four. Twisting shot. Up and good. And a chance at the three-point play. Ishmael Leggett. You know, we talked about the backcourt of Darian Lowe, but what an explosive move. He got the switch on Diara and just blew right by him to the rim. Watch this. That's against two bigs right there and finishing with an sh acrobatic shot. Ross picked up the foul. And the old school three-point play for Leggett. Five-point Panther lead. NC State, they're trying to get Burns some extended rest here in the first half. He's got some time on the bench. Mack has lost two in a row on the road. Marcel misses, looking for a call, didn't get it. A little bit of a four shot inside that time. Pitt's defense has gotten a lot stingier in the last four minutes. Rico had it poked away. Ended up with Austin. Shot clock is at 10. Austin baseline move. Ross came over to meet him. Didn't stop Austin. Have there been some pretty good finishes at the rim by Pitt so far in this game? Timeout taken by the Wolfpack. Zach Austin on that move just a moment ago. For the redshirt junior from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Now the lead is seven. There's the look. It's the, the fake and the uh, the drive has been there for Pitt. And not, not bad defense going straight up. But just a better finish. You can, but you can see that Wolfpack really, really focused in on driving them off the three-point line, making them shoot inside. Panthers make the most threes of any team in the ACC per game, almost 10 per. They are two of seven. Driving to the bucket to build a seven-point lead. And the other thing, too, we talked about the big disparity in the free throw line in the first game and the loss in Raleigh. And uh, so far, NC State, nice job defending without fouling. But uh, Pitt just making some terrific finishes inside. We've only seen nine combined free throws here in this first half with just over five minutes to go in the second meeting of the season between these two teams. They played on February 7th, a three-point win for the Panthers on the road. DJ Horn had 25. DJ Burns had 19. And a lot of stakes. And, and a lot of this lead has been built without Henson really participating in the offense. And Horn only has three points so far. He has the ball now. Leggett is just locked in on him. A lot of dribbling from Horn. Burns with the shot clock at five. Hits the jumper. But Frederico was helping out on Horn that time, and he was a little late getting back to Burns on the jump shot. Eight points now for D.J. Burns. Carrington. Free throw line. Into the corner, Leggett ran it down. It hits Taylor. Hinson up top, Federico. He'll lay it in. You know, for a guy like Hinson in this, in this game, as important as it is, 
It would have been a tough shot, but he gave it up for an easy layup. Really unselfish. Six points now for Federico. O'Connell lining up a three. Off target. Ross tried to grab it. Out of bounds in Panther basketball. So it was Blake Hinson after Leggett ran it down. Put it presented by Pacific Life, creating financial security for more than 150 years. Well, at one point, it was even in the paint, and, uh, and Pitt has gone on a little bit of a spurt here, stretching it out, 22-16. The key thing, though, is with Pitt in this game, they're shooting over 50%, also six offensive rebounds. A lot of those have been tap-outs to keep the possession alive. NC State's got to track those down. Pitt is at 54% shooting in the first half. NC State, 52%. Here is the resume and snapshot. 20 wins, and Mike, you mentioned that they started in the ACC 1-5. And, and, uh, and how about, Tom, 1-5, and, and they're going to Duke. <laughs> Where they had not won, Mike, <laughs> since 1979. That was G-Man time. Right. Long rebound taken by Taylor, and Mike, we just told that DJ Horn has gone to the locker room for NC State. We'll keep you updated on that situation. And that was a that was a shot that Hinson took. He was just he wanted to be part of the offense. He hadn't had a touch in a while. Up ahead, Federico could not catch up with it. Out of bounds and to the Wolfpack. Now that's one that Carrington uh, ill-advised decision that time. There was no real estate to convert that. But again, you'll see uh, Federico out trying to run, make Burns keep up with him in the open floor. Burns is up to eight points. He is the leading scorer for the pack of this first half. Shot clock down to five. Taylor, catch and release for three. Long rebound low. Tough. Bounce pass to Federico and intercepted Taylor. To himself. Working quickly. And that is going to be pit basketball. All right, coming up on the Subaru Halftime Report, the best of courtside Saturday. We'll have a recap from BC and Louisville, a game won by the Eagles. And we'll check in with Liv Hong Kong. We'll get a recap from that as well. That's all coming up on the Subaru Halftime Report. Well, Pitt has made a couple of bad decisions on the break and uh, have not gotten hurt down to the other end. Uh, State failing to capitalize. How about NC State, Mike? Just one made field goal in the last six minutes for the pack. Still hanging in there, though. Carrington has an open path. He knows his alleys right to the rim. Yeah, and uh, he went to get to his right hand, and what happened, there was a lot of traffic around that screen up top, and he was left all alone. Five points now for Carrington. Both Leggett and Lowe have seven points. We'll stay at this end of the floor. Freshman Carlton Carrington from Baltimore, Maryland, Mike. Why so see Look at all the traffic right there, and then just kind of weaving back and forth with it, and uh, Burns not able to recover from the high post. His nickname is Bub, and Bub has gone for five points so far tonight, including that driving layup. Oh, Burns. Without Horn, they're going to have to have other people step up to score. Leggett. Henson. Mid-air contact. Morcel, the closest defender. Diara also there for NC State. And uh, hit by trying to go for the dunk. Gets the call right there. And uh, our camera person right in on the action. Morcel picked up the foul for NC State. Third stop for Hinson Mike, two years at Ole Miss. Also played at Iowa State, second year in the pit program. 65 games in a Panther uniform. It's here that he really has blossomed into an all-league player. Is 0 for 3 from beyond the arc. That's his specialty. He's made over 100 of them this season. And he's third of the conference in three-point shooting by percentage. 
Five points now for Hinson after his trip to the free throw line. Pitt is on a 16-3 run late in this first half. Double team on Burns. Taylor. They run him off the three-point line. He takes it to the rim. Score the basket and the foul. All of that was set up. They had to switch and they had to double team on Burns. And uh, this opened things up. Pretty solid defense in the recovery by Pitt coming out of that except for the last drive. So Leggett picked up the personal foul for the Panthers to put Jaden Taylor at the free throw line. Six points now for Taylor. Austin is back in for the Panthers. Leg it to the bench. DJ Burns will get a late breather with 1.20 to go. And you know, I'm gonna, it's going to be interesting to see, Tom, in the second half, if these extended minutes of rest for Burns are going to pay dividends in the second 20 minutes. Eight points so far in the game for Burns, who is now seated on the Kevin Keats bench. Minute change to play in the first half. Fast paced, entertaining basketball, the ACC. On the CW. All kinds of commotion in front of that NC State bench. And now Hinson trying to harvest the jumper, and he will. Yeah, he's the fan would pass on him. He had the, he looked around for somebody to pass to, but that was his best option to go up for the jump shot. 19 points per game for Hinson, third best of the ACC. And he's up to seven now after that jumper. Taylor had it knocked away. Out of the corner, trying to put a little touch on that one to miss the pass. And that's going to be pit ball. Diara couldn't pull it in. You've waited long enough. The highly anticipated return of the CW's Walker is almost here. The all new season premieres Wednesday, April 3rd, 8 7 Central, only on the CW. Well, I you know, for we talked about it, NC State. You pick what you can, what you want to defend, and they've they've really done a nice job covering the three-point line. But Pitt has countered and gone inside and been very productive. Final 15 seconds. Low to start the offense. Trying to work over the Hinson screen. Charges to the rim. Spins and shoots. Shot would not have counted. 39-29 at halftime. Hinson, the leading scorer for the Panthers this season, almost 19 per game and third best in the ACC. DJ Horn, who is out with a lower extremity injury, leading the scorer this season for NC State. Well, North Carolina sewed up that top seed 84-79, and they sweep the series against Duke this year. Part of a bounce back year for North Carolina. Boy, Hubert Davis has seen everything in his coaching tenure, hasn't he? How about Hinson trying to go over the shoulder to Federico? Ends up with Taylor, let the defender fly off by, and he knocks down the three ball. And maybe that's the way, Mike that NC State and Kevin Keats get back in this one without one. Yeah, and uh, other people, it's not going to be on one person. Other people are going to have to step up. Casey Morsell is going to have to pick up some slow up scoring as well. So the first three of the game for Taylor, who has now made 47 this season. Carrington answers with a three ball at the other end for Pitt. He's the guy. He's actually, his three-point shooting has been better toward the end of the season, Tom, but... Uh, Again, given the choice, I'm going to be, if I'm a defender, I'm going to like seeing him. Carrington up to eight points now, leading scorer for Pitt. This is Taylor looking for another three. Too strong. Carrington entered the game, averaging 19 points and six boards in his last three games. Trying to keep it rolling tonight against NC State on senior night. It's Henson for two. Knifing his way to the bucket. Really, you didn't have to worry about Burns blocking your shot. Burns. 
Over the top, Diara preserving the possession for Taylor. Marcel, explosive drive. Federico recovered defensively up and in for NC State. Well, and the thing that Pitt has to guard against is letting down, you know, the other team's best player and best scorer out of the ball game. It's not a time to take a, you know, a deep breath and relax. Panthers working on a five-game home winning streak. Wins against Florida State, Virginia Tech, Louisville, Notre Dame, and Wake. Trying to close out the season and get their 21st win of the year. Carrington, money from three. All right, so now he's, now he's knocked down two in a row, and now he gets really, really tough to guard. 58 threes of the season for Carrington. Burns trying to counter. Burns does not get the bounce, does get free throws. Here's the look, and you see they're, they're going under the screen. They're going to give him plenty of room and make that an option, but uh, if he steps up and makes threes, <laughs> shake his hand and uh, come out with another defensive game plan. Four of ten now, three-pointers for Pitt that burns at the free throw line. Again, uh, a little more rest than he normally gets in the first half. Let's see if that keeps him fresh for the second 20 minutes. But without, you know, without Horn, they can defend guys a little bit differently. I think they could be a little bit more aggressive in double teaming Burns if they need to. So Taylor and Burns have nine points, leading scores for the pack tonight. Hinson way behind the line. Ripping the ropes for the Pitt Panthers. And he just kept backing up. Deer is a good matchup for him. He's athletic enough to bother him on the three, but that was deep. First three of the night for Henson on four tries. Marcel, the kick and Taylor. Diara over the top. Burns trying to clean it up. Doesn't get the bounce. Out to Taylor. He can't handle it. Federico saves it. He goes in for the jam. Austin all the way for the slam for the Panthers. Brought to you by Pacific Life, creating financial security for more than 150 years. At the confluence of the Monongahela and the Allegheny to form the Ohio, it is all Panthers. They have made their last six shots in a row. Austin with the save, and then he tries to take the rim off its hinges. Well, and, you know, Austin's unique in that uh, he leads his team in blocks in and steals, and uh, gets rewarded for his work there. He's a terrific defensive player. Sorry, second on the team in blocks and steals. He has scored over a thousand points in his career as a transfer from High Point University in North Carolina, where he played a couple of years. First year of the Pitt program, and a thunderous ending to that last sequence as he saved it and then slammed it. And this is a steep uphill climb for NC State without its leading scorer, DJ Horn. This is the other DJ Burns. Shot clock is at seven. Draws the double. O'Connell, he hits a three right in front of his own bench. It's interesting, they dug in that time. When, Burn, when Burns puts the ball on the floor, they're going to dig in and try to double a bit more, but nice answer by O'Connell. Still just three of 12 on three-pointers for the Wolfpack. Carrington, behind the backboard, off the back of the glass. And that was deflected. They're saying it was deflected, so... It will maintain possession when we come back. Fifty-two thirty-eight. The Panthers with the lead early in the second half against visiting NC State. It will be Panthers basketball. Let's take a look at what's going on around the ACC. Presented by T-Mobile, Mike. Yeah, some uh, it's good score. Obviously, the Wake Clemson uh, score impacts this game with Pitt being able to get the double by, and then North Carolina taking care of business 
How about Cormac Ryan with 31 points, six of eight from three? And the number one seed in the tournament next week for Hubert Davis of North Carolina. Leg it on the jumper for Pitt. North Carolina this season, although on the road today, with 14 and one at home, the only loss against the Clemson Tigers. Who are also expected to join the NCAA tournament field, although they lost today on the road at Wake, which they lost once at home. Taylor on the drive. Wake's only loss at home was against Georgia Tech. We saw them in overtime, Mike, on the CW and win a game in OT against Miami. That was a close shave for Steve Forbes' team. And they're trying to make the tournament as well. And we're going to be. Uh, Teams would work to do in the in the term, but that's the case every every year just about. Steal from Leggett. If the Panthers win, they will get the number four seed, Carrington. First time since joining the league they've ever gotten the double bye. First time in their ten years as a part of the ACC. Last year they were the number five seed. That had been their highest seeding at the tournament. Made it to the quarters and lost to Duke 96 69 in Greensboro after a second round win against Georgia Tech. No team has come out of Tuesday and won the tournament so far. Some teams have come out of Wednesday and done it. NC State will be playing on Tuesday, Mike, as yep. the number 10 seed. They'll take on Louisville. They made it to the quarters last year as well and lost to Clemson in Greensboro 80 to 54. Beat Virginia Tech in the second round. Incident. Had a clear path to the basket. His defender fell down and he took the step back. Foul against the Panthers and Leggett. The CW's number one show making a comeback from the sidelines to the streets. Don't miss the All American season premiere Monday, April 1st, 8 7 Central, only on the CW. As I sit next to the All American from Duke, Mike Jaminski and Mike. It's been a pleasure. Another season in the oh, books for us, and yeah, it's, been, it's been wonderful. It's Absolutely wonderful. It's been awesome, as always, Tom. I love being your wingman. Fantastic trip through the ACC. From December to mid March. As we mentioned at halftime, we started. Our first game on the CW line was a court storm by Georgia Tech as they upset Duke. At home. In fact, they went on to beat North Carolina at home as well. Yeah, I was going to say we, we had this pit team with two very impressive road wins, and that Georgia Tech team with a couple of very impressive home wins. Damon Stoudemire in his first year. It's going to be a fun week next week in D.C. for the 71st ACC tournament. And the Panthers, if they can win this one, won't see the court until the third day of the event. The final on. Saturday night in our nation's capital. Connell from the free throw line. And that has always been a test, too, for somebody who's gotten a double by time, especially by a team if they just their first game was Wednesday. They've gotten one game under their belt, a win. Uh, it, you know, it, sometimes that's a problem for the team that's not taken the court yet. And although Duke lost today, Mike, they head to Washington as the defending champs, beating Virginia by 10 last year in the title game. In Greensboro, North Carolina. Which, by the way, for the next five years, it's either Charlotte or Greensboro. That's the destination for the ACC tournament. Make it easy travel for us. Yeah, absolutely. We will be there. Diaz Graham was defending. How about the job that this guy's done this season, Mike? Uh, just, and he talked about it and. Uh, you know, just trying to be as positive as he could. He thought he saw some things there, even with the one and five start. He wasn't totally convinced that they could overcome that. Yeah, it, it was a little bit of a fake it till you make it uh, <laughs> <laughs> type of philosophy. More sell at the free throw line for NC State. But we had a long discussion with Coach Cable at the shoot around today, and we asked him specifically about the start. And he said, we didn't make a big deal about it. We knew we were going to do. We went there and had perhaps our best game of the entire season. And he thought too the best thing was getting away from Pitt and, and going to Duke and then they follow that up with a win down at Georgia Tech. So it was a great trip to gain some momentum and uh, boy did they ever. I mean they've won 10 of their last 13 games and those are all in the ACC. 
eight of their last ten and three of their last four. That is some momentum heading to Washington. And you can see the importance of this game. It has been a very tight rotation. Hinson followed his own miss. Only seven guys have played for Pitt so far. With Capel in championship mode. Panthers had gone about three minutes without scoring. Hinson with that field goal on a second effort. Inside of 12 minutes to go now in our second half. Middlebrooks maintains the pivot foot and calculates the angle. Backcourt was his friend that time for sure. I'll tell you what, Mike, NC State is not going away. No, it's a 10 point game. I was going to say, it was way too early to go into the home run try. This is the thing, and I'm sure Jeff Cable's going to talk to him about this at that timeout. Let's keep our focus there and finish this game off. That was the theme of shoot-around today. Finish the deal. Not ready for a Bill Mazeroski in the World Series in 1960 quite yet. Now, don't go. <laughs> Marcel, turn around. Leg it. Don't bag on my Yankees <laughs> like that, man. That hurt. You got plenty of titles, Mike. Yeah, that hurt. Leg it all the way. Didn't get the roll. He hit the deck near the stanchion and a whistle. Senior night for Blake Hitson. 14 points. 5 of 11 from the floor. Staying with it. Panthers by 10. On the CW is brought to you by Ram Trucks. Built to serve. Just a couple of weeks ago, the 50th anniversary of the 1974 National Championship team. Mike, they went 30 and 1, won the title game against Marquette at Greensboro Coliseum. David Thompson, Tommy Burleson, and Gary Hahn also honored for his 30 plus years of service as the radio play by play announcer for NC State. On Monday, they had their final home game. It was a loss to Duke, but Gary was honored for all his dedication to the program. Basketball jersey, football jersey, and we wish him the very best. Yeah, and, uh, he and Tony Haynes, 25 years they've been together, and uh, a terrific duo, great calls on the radio. Gary, just a, a wonderful guy to visit with and uh, get the lowdown on what everything will pack when we have games here. He's got at least one more basketball game to do. NC State, number 10 seed, will take on Louisville, the number 15 seed in Washington next week. Let's see how Pitt does coming out of that timeout. Uh, maybe regain a little bit of focus and purpose here. Shot clock is down to four. Right, that's some focus. Well, Carrington has bailed them out with some three-point shooting here in the second half. And uh, that possession really not going anywhere. And only about three seconds left on the shot clock. Three of six on three-pointers for Carrington. The double digits for the 22nd time this season for the freshman from Baltimore, Maryland. He's one of the youngest players in all of college basketball and has a triple-double to his credit. Diaz Graham defensively. Diaz Graham keeping his feet that time. November 6, Mike. Carlton Carrington, a triple-double. First game of the year against North Carolina a and And it's Hinson. Yeah, he's starting to feel it from behind the arc now, too. His second three of the game, 17. I mean, in a blank point, this was a 10-point game just moments ago. Taylor, pass, three, and pass connects. And an immediate timeout by Kevin Keats. So Breon pass, hitting the three just the fourth made tonight on 14 chances from beyond the arc. We talked about their bigs are all very good. Shot blockers in, stealing the ball. Great job keeping his feet right there. And then right here, this is Henson. He's really been seeking that three-point line, especially in the right side of the floor. So Henson has made two threes tonight. That gives him 106 on the season. Tell you what, no, that NC State some pretty good answers without Horn in this game. There's Pitt, and that, they're making. I tell you what, with with a win here and the double buy, that's a strong resume for the NCAA tournament. I think. Made it to the second round last year before losing to Xavier. 
Won in the first four, Mike, against Mississippi State, and then beat Iowa State in the first round of the NCAA tournament a season ago. Did it with older guys last year. He's got a much younger crew except for Henson. They went last year, Mike. They had not been since 2016. Henson behind the last line of defense for the Wolfpack. Everybody lifted is kind of what uh, NC State was running, and that just opens up backdoor cuts for Pitt. 27 times this season, double digits for Henson. He now has 19 of 7 of 13 shooting. Middlebrooks. Diaz Grant poked it away momentarily. Middlebrooks recovers and scores. We talked about it. He's given him some nice scoring. He's got eight points now in the game. Nice job keeping his balance. He's had some some very tough finishes around the rim in the game. It's above his season average of about five points per game for Middlebrooks, the transfer from Clemson. Leggett able to save that one from the front row here at Peterson Event Center. Leggett got a little too deep there. Ball goes out of bounds and will stay with Pitt. Closed captioning for ACC basketball. The CW is brought to you by Skechers Basketball. Comfort that performs. So glad that you're with us for ACC basketball. CW courtside Saturday. Tom Warmy, Mike Jaminski, and our outstanding production crew. We thank everyone at Raycom Sports and at CW Sports and Carrington inside the line for two. Dangerous guy. The guy inbounding the ball underneath. There's only four and a half seconds on the shot clock, and that was uh, that was run to perfection. Two points now for Carrington. Taylor, nowhere to go. Got it back from Diara. Wide open three. Makes no mistake. Once again, the leading scorer for NC State, DJ Horn, had to leave. Did not return to the game and not available for the second half. Lower extremity injury. Well, and Taylor has stepped up. He's the only well, he's the only packing double figures with 14 points. And they got 16 points. But he needs some help out there. Taylor, who did not score in the first meeting between the teams in early February, now has 16 points. He only had two against Duke on uh, on Monday and didn't make a field goal. Middlebrooks almost stole that one. It goes out of bounds, and that's Pitt basketball. He was trying to get around Federico. How about this game from Jaden Taylor? Back to a 10-point lead for Pitt. Tournament in the ACC, a couple of big wins for Notre Dame, the number four seed, against Virginia Tech, the number one seed, without Liz Kitley, the three time player of the year in the conference. And NC State and West Moore advancing to the title game 69 43 against Florida State, which had an upset win against Syracuse yesterday. So those seeds you'd expect, I don't know, obviously injuries, but a little more competitive semifinal round. So Virginia Tech will not be around to defend its title. NC State. Won the ACC Women's Championship in 20, 21, and 22. And they're back in the title game against Notre Dame, which won it four years in a row when they entered the conference. Back to the action here at Peterson Event Center. Carrington. Uh, he's been terrific in the second half. And you know, every time that Pitt, though, has tried to you know, stretch this out to a lead, NC State has stayed right there with them. Taylor leads the way with 16 points. He is the only player in double digits. Out of bounds and two pit. So the turnover from the pack. They have made their last four shots for Kevin Keats. Over 200 career victories for Keats in his 10th season overall. Harrington wide of the mark. That was his first really forced shot of the second half. Despite the miss, still has 18 points. Henson has 19, leads Pitt. Burns. The dexterity of the big man. Can't convert it. Well, I think the big thing is Federico's been able to stay out of foul trouble in this game, and, and he's been a bother to Burns inside. Only one personal foul for Federico. 
Needs a little safety valve here and finds Hinson. Defender fell down. That's enough time for Hinson to hit that jumper. Yeah, uh, not falling down is enough time usually for him to get that jumper, but that's the second time he's had a clean look. 21 points tonight, Mike. Ball came right to Burns. Inside Diara from pass and a foul on the play, trying to recover defensively. It was Hinson. And, you know, despite it all, it's been a very quiet, efficient 21 points for Hinson. Eight of 14, couple of threes. He really has not forced his offense in this game. 14 times this season. 14 times. 20 points or more. Highlighted by the home game against Louisville where he scored 41 and made nine threes to tie his own school record. Because he made nine at West Virginia as well in scoring 29 points. And he had a bushel fall down at Durham too in that uh, win. Ed, eight. He did not miss. Yeah. Right? Seven, seven of seven. seven. Yeah. And 24 points in the win at Duke. In fact, Pitt had lost Mike 24 straight games on the road against ranked opponents since 2013 before the win on the road against Duke. And that was the game, you know, when we, we asked Jeff, he said his team felt a little differently about him, itself after that win. It really started to build some confidence. Everything but the finish for Henson. Tried to ease that one up on the rim with the left hand. Changing in midair, mind you. Three, Drano, Taylor, Mike. The lead is single digits. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> again, guys have stepped up. They've made plays, made shots. Now, we saw NC State do this, Mike, on the road at Clemson when DJ Horn scored the winning bucket in the closing seconds. Carrington is open. Taylor grabs it. Yeah, I think he's got to be careful now falling in love with that three and try to attack the rim. Carrington is three of eight on threes, and it's Taylor. Free ball and timeout. And all of a sudden, a six point game. NC State is connected on five of its last seven shot attempts. Just, I mean, incredible resilience by this team without their best score. Taylor coming off a really poor effort against Duke has been outstanding in this game. They have they have matched hit from the three-point line seven apiece. There's Jaden Taylor's night. The stark contrast from the first meeting against Pitt, where he was held scoreless. 22 tonight. He's up to 50 made threes this season, Mike. He's got four in the game, four of seven and 22 points, and that leads all scorers. Hinson has 21 for Pitt. That is part of an 8-0 run for the Wolfpack. I would expect Henson to be a big part of this possession, but the other thing too is let's I would like to see Pitt get something attacking the rim. Pressure the length of the court from the pack. NC <laughs> State with that 8-0 run. The Panthers trying to interrupt it right here. Inside of four and a half minutes to go in regulation. Carrington weaves his way. No second chance opportunities either for Pitt. Seven of 18 on threes in the game for NC State. Four of those from Jaden Taylor. He pumps up another one. Fouled on the three point shots. Leggett with the foul for Pitt. When we come back, Taylor's at the free throw line for three attempts. The lead is six. You see the three-point shooting, and over his last three, he's been averaging 50% from three, so hitting that mark in the second half. But then Jaden Taylor is the one who has really stepped up for NC State with uh, Horn being out of the game, having a massive night. Taylor has 11 points, Mike, in the last four minutes and 20 seconds, and he's only 
two points away from his career high of 24. This is all after Monday's performance. Two points, one rebound. Well, Jaden Taylor. And all and those points coming from the free throw line didn't make a field goal in that game. He is at the free throw line. He will have three fouled by Leggett in the act of shooting beyond 22 feet, one and three quarter inches away from the basket. Yeah, Kevin Keith, I asked him, I said, what has made you guys so tough on the road this year? And and he says he refuses to let his team talk differently about the road as opposed to home. You know, we, it's it's not this daunting thing that we have to leave Raleigh and go out and win ball games. They've had five road wins. It's two of three for Taylor. O'Connell and Hinson with flying out of bounds. O'Connell trailing the play and favoring his left leg as he runs up the court. Well, Jamie Lucky called the foul on Cam Woods, Mike. But NC State, that's only their third team foul, so they are nowhere near putting Pitt at the free throw line in the bonus. Just the one timeout for NC State. Pitt has two. And it was O'Connell on the hip, and he picks up the foul. Jamel Spearman right on top of the ball. Courtney Green is also with Jamie Lucky and Jamel Spearman tonight. Low. Leggett saved that kick. Great catch. Pass in tight quarters. Federico. He'll turn around. Teammates, they kind of passed him into a tough situation right there. Early stages of this half, Mike. Hit led by 17 points. Taylor. Foul prior to the shot. So Leggett. So that's only the sixth team foul, so Pitt has one more before State's in the bonus. That's the fifth on Leggett, Mike. And we touched on it. I mean, the big issue in Raleigh was State fouling too much, and they've done a nice job defensively. And as quick as those leads have occurred for Pitt, they've evaporated just as fast. Burns. Didn't get the bounce. Diara boxed out by Hinson. He's over the top for the foul. Now the only bind that Kevin Keats finds himself in is they've got one timeout left. He's had to use those to massage his team back in. He's done a great job to get it to this point. Four point game with three minutes to go. Trailed by 10 points at halftime. 39 29 to the Panthers. Hinson against Niara. Spins and shoots. Federico bounces that thing around out of bounds. NC State ball. And I tell you, that is a really good defensive matchup for NC State. Niara has got the quickness and the length to guard Hinson on the outside and then bother his mid-range game. Kevin Keats in the pack with a stunning comeback here in the second half. Still trailing by four. Two and a half minutes remaining in regulation. Game in early February and Raleigh was close. Three point win for the Panthers on the road. Taylor got two defenders in the air and he's going back to the free throw line. Federico and Austin in the vicinity defensively for Pitt. And that's one thing, and Jaden Taylor has been very effective at getting to the free throw line this season. Four of six tonight from the strike, Mike. And he has tied his career high with 24 points. And now he's got a new career high with 25. Amazing performance. From the junior from Indianapolis, Indiana. 
So Middlebrooks will check in for Kevin Keats. Yeah, Burns gets the breather. Offense for defense going down this last two and a half minutes. Still a one possession game. Wow. A couple of misses for Taylor at the free throw line, though. Buckle up for the final two minutes and change from Peterson Event Center. Low around Federico. Low to the rim. Rolls off. Federico follow. Didn't get the finish, but uh, that drive took everybody away from help and blocking out. Federico with eight points. Taylor pumps up a three. Off the mark. Panther basketball. And the zoo loves it. to go the pack cut the lead to three Federico on the offensive glass to make it 72 67 potential mismatch Carrington trying to use his speed Diara recovers defensively Austin kick Carrington Boys on that possession, the shot clock right on their back. Over three minutes without a field goal for NC State. Morcel trying to end that drought, can't do it. Ball ends up with Taylor. He hits a three as he hits the deck. And a timeout, the final one of the game for Kevin Keats. Five point lead for Pitt after the three from Jaden Taylor. My word, Mike. 28 points on the night and five made threes for Taylor. He's been the story. You know, I also, you talk about when a guy goes out. Now, here's that last play where the last pit possession, Carrington has been huge from behind the line. 21 points for him. He's matched Hinson, but, uh, you know, you don't expect one guy to take over for the other leading scorer. And uh, Taylor has done exactly that and more than filling in for Horn. The five bay threes, one shy of a career high for Taylor. He has set his career high in points with 28. I mean, he has scored this season, and Jeff Capel is well aware of it. Taylor now for the sixth time over the 20 point plateau. Ryan, you got to look again. We'll talk about the freshman. You got low at 85% free throw shooting. Carrington at 80% free throw shooting. So inbounding, you want to get the ball to them. Leggett also at 85%. So their primary ball handlers are guys that you don't want to foul. And still, NC State only five team fouls. So they've got two to get to the bonus. NC State in the bonus. It was 17 fouls. They can be really aggressive here going for a steal and not have it hurt them at all. Incredible night for Jaden Taylor. <laughs> Diara and Morcel closing down on Jalen Lowe. So they give it to Diara, his second. As Mike noted, 16 fouls now on NC State. Up ahead to Carrington in stride. Alley oop, Diaz Graham, rocking the rim for Pitt. And they're going to give a foul on the push, too, on that lob. And I love this. I mean, don't attack the press just to get it over half court. They just go right at the rim. Great look ahead. They got it over the front line of the defense. And then Carrington making a play. Guillermo Diaz Graham. His twin brother Jorge is out with an ankle injury. They are our sophomores. Spain, Canary Islands. And now the lead is eight as he finishes off the old school three-point play and exits the ball game. 
Eight points, Diaz Graham. Time is a factor for NC State. Diara rattles home a three. Diara with the three, Mike. That's been a part of his game that's come alive in the last half of the season. He struggled early, but he's been terrific from behind the arc. I mean, he'd made 10 threes in his last seven games, right? 10 of 21. Just can one there on his second attempt of the night. So Carrington at the free throw line for Pitt. And here you go. You can get this guy, 80% free throw shooter. Front end of the one on one. Jeff Capel will not be satisfied until the clock hits triple zero. <laughs> That's some real I mean, looks of exasperation in those timeouts down the stretch because NC State keeps on answering with threes. Mike, he knows about last second heroics, right? Yeah. In a Duke uniform back in 1995 and the three point shot from just over midcourt to send that game against North Carolina to double overtime. It was a win for North Carolina. Same result as, uh, yeah. this, as this evening 102 to 100. Highest scoring game in the history of the rivalry. Let's take a look at our player of the game brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. Yeah, it's going to be a senior night for him to remember for sure. We talked about he really has not been overly aggressive, but very efficient. 8 of 16, 2 of 6 and 3. Three rebounds, a couple of assists for him. So the senior gets player of the game on senior night, as it should be, right, G-Man? Yeah, somehow I think that Carrington's going to be on that all-freshman team when that gets <laughs> announced next week. He'll, he'll, he'll get plenty of accolades. They have combined for 44 points tonight. And six made three-pointers, four from Carrington. Taylor. Oh, that was halfway down. Middlebrook tried to follow Diara as well. And taken by Austin. And then Morcel was right there. Last year's coach of the year, Jeff Capel in the ACC. Kevin Keats, his team, valiant effort, Mike, considering that DJ Horn, their leading mm -hmm. scorer, did not play really most of this game. He went out in the first half. I would think. Uh, Jeff Capel will get some votes this year based on the, their turnaround. Although I got to think Cooper Davis might be a front runner for that award. Twenty five and six on the season with a victory today for North Carolina and Hubert Davis number one seed in Washington next week. Looks like the Panthers are on their way to the double bye and one of the top four seeds they'll be number four. O'Connell unable to graze the rim. Morcel tried to bounce it off of Carrington. Could not do it. Final seconds from Peterson of Ed Center. Double by for the Pitt Panthers. First one ever in the ACC for them. 21st win of the season for 